Hello everybody, I thought I'd just do a quick video of my 5 inch gauge class 14. Uh, you can see the body shell there, I've got it off the chassis. Just because this has remote control and DCC sound like you would have in a double O gauge model. So I just thought I'd do a quick run now because I've had a lot of people ask me. Um, now the Loco does run off a conventional 4QD controller. So it's a 4QD DNO-10, which is pretty much the standard controller that most people go for these days. They're a decent price decent power and they are a nice sort of small compact size to get in your loco they're a really good little bit of kit so with the 4qd dno 10 we then have a 4qd rc interface which um, on this i've actually put inside the controller casing to save space you can play tetris and get it in there just about it, it just squeezes in there so you can see the cable from the 4qd remote control interface coming out of the controller uh, out of controller casing into the plug there then um, out the other side of the RC interface obviously normally you have an ignition wire and then you have the wire to go to your throttle so on this one the ignition wire is literally just um, terminated together so it's constantly live so you don't use the ignition wire anymore it's basically just looped straight around on itself and then it's just tucked out of the way normally um, to keep it there the throttle wire, uh, however, goes on to a Fosworks RX24 ESC receiver. So Fosworks have modified that for us with a 5 volt. So it will take 12 volt, sorry, off the batteries and uh, it will it will convert that down to 5 volts to power itself um, because 4QD RC interfaces don't have the ability to power your RC receiver. So you come out the RC receiver into the 4QD RX24 ESC. Um, from there, that basically splits what you're doing. So the inputs from the handset, which is here, I'll show you that in a minute, basically go uh, are received there and then it splits in like a Y if you like to make it easier to understand. So one half goes to the loco to tell the loco what to do. The other half goes to the decoder to tell the sound decoder what to do. So, yeah, it will come out of there. You've got the throttle, um, the throttle part of the RC interface coming out. And obviously that powers the 4QD, tells it what, what you want it to do. So coming out the other side, though, it goes down to uh, a little 21 pin DCC decoder board, which is in there. I'll uh, stick a picture up of one. And that has a 21 pin Locksound 5 decoder installed. So if you... If you want to take this system out and put it in a different loco, all you need to do is, um, if you find someone with a lock programmer, for example, like myself, you can download the files or buy a file off somebody and then uh, upload it onto your decoder. And uh, then you can say, if you, if you wanted to put this whole system, take it out and put it in a 47, you can do that. Um, similar to on Mtronics and stuff where you can take the SD card out and put a new one in. You can literally, if you want, just replace the decoder. All you need to remember on the decoder, if you're putting one in that you've already got, it needs to be set to address number three. And then um, you've got to mess about with some settings to make it rev up and down as you'd like. That's something that you can tweak as and when. Um, um, but basically, I am powering the loco solely off 24 volts and the sound is off of 12 volts so as well as the um, decoder that needs power and the receiver the loco also needs an external amplifier i've used quite a large one under there it's just one that i had hanging around so you can see it sits under the 4qd just gives you an idea so you need to you need to make sure though how however that you ground the 21 pin um, dcc decoder um, socket to the same ground as this otherwise you'll get a lot of interference it's saying that it took me a little while to work out um so yeah other than that though we've got the handset obviously no massive bulky thing that you have to carry around like a breeze block these are still 2.4 gigahertz like the usual spectrum stuff and all that uh, that most people use however obviously it fits in the palm of your hand i have tried it for range and it's very good but of course you shouldn't really be letting these things go completely out of sight anyway. So I don't think you'll have a problem with range. Um, this does have dead mans. This is one of the new additions for Fosworks. So as you're driving the loco, you have to keep the dead mans held. If you let go of it, then after around five to 10 seconds, the 
uh, the loco will come to a stand. Uh, if you switch the controller off, the loco will come to a stand immediately. Or if you centre the reverser, like so, the loco will also stop immediately. But every 60 seconds, if you're driving, it will start beeping at you. And that's because you need to un take your finger off the dead man's and put your finger back on, just like the real thing. To access the functions on the DCC decoder, you've always got 12 possible functions on here. On here. So you've got one, two, three. You then, if you look, they're all in colours. So hold the green button, that gives you four, five, six. Hold the red button, gives you seven, eight, nine. And then you see the bottom three are in a sort of brownie bronze. And that means you need to hold both buttons and that will give you 10, 11, 12. Realistically, you're not probably going to be using 12 functions, but it's there if you really want it. But anyway, um, switch the handset on, switch the loco on. Function one is usually the engine. So you can hear there, we've started up. Obviously you want to start it up with the regulator on zero and in neutral. If you get any um, little hiccups where the loco will not want to move, it's probably because you've changed direction with the regulator, not at zero. So it will just stay still. And um, I think if I remember the fix for that is I'm going to try and do it, see if it goes. Something, there you go. So it gets stuck like this. It won't do anything. So you go back to zero, put the reverser in neutral, then change direction again, then it should let you go. Obviously, you can start moving without the dead man's pressed. But you can hear now that it's beeping at me, telling me that I need to press the button. So in a second, it will kill the loco. There you go. So that's loco dead there, so go back to zero and then it will let you drive again. And uh, that's basically it. So it just makes sure you hold the button all the time. Obviously, it's hard to do with, your, with holding the phone as well. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a, it's a good little system. I've had uh, a lot of fun with it so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to fitting it in my 47s. Hopefully that helps someone. Um, let me know if you've got any questions and I'll try and help if I can.